Maybe you've heard about Fatima, the miracle of the sun, 1917. Or maybe you haven't heard about the miracle of Fatima. Well, here to talk about that miracle and all the ramifications of what I believe is a very important event is L.A. Marzulli. And L.A., welcome to uh, Prophecy Watch. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, You have produced uh, a a DVD, and I'm holding it here, Fatima, Miracle of the Sun or Harbinger of Deception? I think the whole world really kind of knows about the miracle of Fatima. But they have no idea what happened there. It's called the miracle of the sun, which it was not. And go into that, how you got into a study of it and how it bears on uh, our lives as Christians. There were books by Fina de Armada and Joaquim Fernandez, which I read about 10 or 12 years ago when I was doing research for politics, prophecy, and the supernatural. And one of the chapters on that was about Fatima. And I was intrigued with their work because these, both Fina de Armada and Joaquim Fernandez are Portuguese and they access Fatima. Um, Fatima is a small, was at at the time, 101 years ago, it's just a a small village out in the middle of nowhere, literally. And these three children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta, um, were illiterate peasants. Uh, Lucia was 10, Francisco was 9, Jacinta was 7. And they were contacted by an entity. And this went on for six months, from May 13th, 1917, till October 13th, 1917. Obviously the first apparition was just the three kids. They never saw the apparition, whatever it was, the entity move its mouth. It communicated with them telepathically. The entity gave them something to eat and something to drink, which most people aren't aware of either. Lucia and Jacinta ate and drank, but Francisco only ate, did not drink. So Francisco could see the apparition, but could never heard her never heard it talk, where Lucia and Jacinta could see her, but would also hear in their heads the voice. So that's what happened, and over a period of months, the crowds grew, and a lot of controversy. The parish priest, the original parish priest, who interrogated the kids, Father Fiera, believed that it was utterly demonic. Others weren't quite so sure. So there was this controversy. By October 13th, the crowd swelled to over 70,000 people, because They had been told that there was going to be a sign. They didn't know what the sign was, but there was going to be a sign. And that's why, and I want to make it really clear, we took, people can believe whatever they want to believe. So we took Mary of the Bible off the table. We never go after who the entity was or anything like that. We don't disparage um, what, let's say, people want to believe. Although I have to say, in the common parlance, usually Mary is included as part of the miracle. Yes. Absolutely. And, but, but you've discovered we something. We just completely and, took that off the table. D- yeah. Don't deal with it all. We're, n- we're not going to attack that. People can believe what they want to believe. What we focused on was the eyewitness testimony from the 1917 original handwritten documents. Not the documents that come later in 1923. Not what comes from Lucia 11 years later in 1928 when she's cloistered in a convent. All this is a matter of historical record. I'm not making it up. I believe you have sort of cracked the Fatima code in this research. Thank you. I really believe that now we we finally understand not only what happened, but how it bears on us as Christians. You know, you say, I've cracked the Fatima code, basically, and I I appreciate that. Thank you. I kind of, but I'm standing on the shoulders of Joaquim Fernandez and and, uh, Fina de Armada and and, uh, uh, Frederica Clara de Armada, her daughter, and all the other researchers, Francisco Correra, who um, was our guide, um, and we interviewed many of these people, but what, what we always went back to were the original 1917 records, which Fina de Armada had access to in what's called the sanctuary. And the sanctuary is in Fatima, and it's where the original, some of the original records are kept, but also other artifacts are there, and we'll get into that in mm. a bit. And what was interesting is, when you go back to the 1917 records, and you go and, and read what the witnesses are saying, they keep talking about looking up and seeing a dull silver disc overhead. And it's important to remember that in 1917, most people in Portugal had never seen anything 
like an airplane, a dirigible, a blimp, nothing like that. They'd never seen any kind of aerial phenomena at all. Didn't exist in Portugal. There might have been a few planes in Lisbon, but most people had never seen anything. So there's nothing in the grid system to prepare them for what they see. And what they see is something that's absolutely astounding. And usually the description of what they see has, uh, has something to do with the sun dancing in the sky and coming down over the crowd. Right. And they're feeling kind of some heat or something. And it's enough heat that on a rainy day it dried out their clothes. That's what we've all heard over the years. And so this thing that comes down is supposed to be the sun and or something like the sun. Well, that's not at all what happened. No, right? it's not. What happened was it had been raining all day. It was a sea of umbrellas. We've got black and white photographs and we show those. It's just people are drenched to the bone for the most part. And the clouds part, it stops raining, but then another cloud comes in front of the sun and out of that cloud comes an object which begins to spin like this and then fall like a falling leaf to the ground. It does this three times. It goes, falls and then spins back up uh, and then falls again. Hmm. And it does this and finally it does what we call the flyby where it comes very low over the crowd, about 100, about 100 yards above the crowd, hmm. very low. How big was it? We really don't know. Uh, people were... We're terrified. There's, there's phenomena that is going on during this. And it's not like a, like a one or a 30 second or one minute. This thing goes on between 10 and 14 minutes, the, the, this, this miracle of the sun. And what, what, again, people who have not really studied this and looked into it aren't aware of certain attributes of the flyby where, where on the hoods of the cars pop open gasoline spontaneously combusts, windshields of the automobiles shatter. People, are, people think it's the end of the world. They are terrified at what's going on. This isn't some benevolent apparition like you see in the movies mm -hmm. where everybody kneels and starts. It's not that way at all. Now, some people are doing that. I get that. But there's other, other things that are happening which are absolutely troubling. You talked about the clothes being dry. With that are skin burns. And what we do is we bring in Chase Klotsky, who is a UFO field investigator. So as we're talking, let's say, about the enigmatic, what, 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 the, what people call the rose petals. Yeah. It's not rose petals. What it is, they call it angel hair, which again is another misnomer. There's some sort of fiber-like material from the upper, upper atmosphere when disturbed, falls to the ground and then vanishes. And it, it's been doctored up and the language has been changed. No one knows what these particles were. These particles, called angel hair, are found in modernity when UFOs appear. The many, heat, many cases. I've read several cases sure. you know, that have what is called angel hair, and sometimes it evaporates. It just sort of disappears right. before they can take a sample of it. Exactly. And, and other, other aspects of this, very troubling. You, you, know, you, you mentioned the, the clothes being dry. Well, with right. that, um, the skin burns. And again, that's analogous to what happens in modernity with when people encounter UFOs. People heard a buzzing noise during the Fatima apparition on October 13th, 1917. That buzzing noise is heard when people encounter UFOs in modernity. I'm not making this stuff up. This is all documented, and that's what we talk about in the film. And there's another aspect to, of it, which I find incredibly troubling, which was buried in the archives, and no one knew about this until Fina de Armada uncovered it. And that is a fourth seer. Before the three children, right, there was a woman called Carolina Carriera. And Carolina was out tending sheep. And Wesley San Giorgi brings this to life with his CGI, computer generated imagery. And Carolina is tending sheep, and she sees this entity under the same tree that, that, that the apparition appears to the three children, Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta. And it's laughing and singing. And it's got long blonde hair, which you don't see in Portugal. It's wearing like a one piece, and, uh, um, like a, a dress or a shirt. She's not sure, not sure whether it's male or female. And it communicates telepathically and says, come here, come here. And she doesn't come. She's afraid. When she goes back to look at the sheep, she looks back and the, this child is no longer there. It's floating, standing above the tree. Hmm. And at this point, she's absolutely freaked out. Well, Fina de Armada read that testimony and tried to locate Carolina, and she located her. And that testimony is, is in one of Fina's books, which is absolutely incredible. All that was buried. So it's a very, very complex 
set of circumstances at Fatima. But the smoking gun for us is, is something that, that came uh, in, in just really the recent in last few months we finally got this information. Well, you know, the, the miracle of Fatima, a, as commonly perceived uh, across the board, people around the world I think are familiar with it, as a time when uh, the Virgin Mary appeared to three Portuguese children right. and gave them prophecies. They wrote the prophecies down and they became the, the property of the Vatican. Mm -hmm. And there's been uh, so much coverage in the news over the years going all the way back to the 50s, 50s, 60s, 70s, everybody said, what, what's, the, what's the prophecy the of Fatima? Secret, yeah. What is the prophecy of Fatima? And so that's the way it's been presented to us. But uh, with your research, we know something entirely different. Now. Well, here's something that most people don't understand. Okay, you've got the three seers. First of all, Francisco's off the table because he couldn't hear what the apparition was saying. You've got Lucia, who's a 10-year-old girl at the time, and Jacinta, who's only seven years old. They're illiterate. They have no grid work in which to place anything that they're seeing except the stories that they've been told going to church and from their family. Very young, mm -hmm. illiterate children. After the last apparition of October 13th, uh, nothing happens. In other words, when you go back and you look at the records, there's not one word about Russia or the conversion of Russia. It's not there in the 1917 records. It does not exist. Lucia is taken into a convent, given a vow of silence, which many of the nuns take. She's cloistered, and 11 years after the event is when she begins to write the so-called secrets. So people can do with that what they will. But in the 1917 records, the so-called secrets of Fatima do not exist. They're not there. But you know what's funny, L.A., is that when you hear this story, and speaking of Russia, uh, in 1917, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin you know, arose to, to found the Communist Party in Russia. And 1917 was a very, very big day in Jerusalem. It was a historical year mm -hmm. that, that all this happened. And the, the idea, I think, is to put it all together. What does it mean? And again... Uh, the, 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 if you will, the myth about this is it involved the Virgin Mary, but when you really get down to the story, it's, that's, not, it's not the Virgin Mary, no. it's some kind of a creature that is hard to describe. What we found, and I gotta tell you, when I was there, Gary, I, I should have done more homework. I had an idea of what I was walking into, but I had no idea of the depth of the principality that is still over that region. There is ancient goddess worship that predates the Christian era, which was all throughout Portugal. Um, the priests, the male priests were all castrated. And we get into this. This is why in the beginning of the film, there's a disclaimer. Some of this we, we advise viewer discretion because we get into some very, very intense subjects, um, things that a lot of people might find disturbing. But um, there is goddess worship, and this is pre-Roman era. Goddess worship and, and the goddess Mora, this ancient Celtic goddess, uh, the sacred, the so-called sacred feminine is worshipped. It is all throughout Portugal. And there are many apparition sites throughout Portugal, all worshipping this, this female entity, whatever or whoever she is. I think it's time to look at the uh, trailer for uh, Fatima too, because you have, have produced a second DVD on this. Which, by the way, I have watched. I find it groundbreaking for reasons which we will discuss after taking a quick look Thank you. here at Fatima 2. What if what happened in Fatima 101 years ago was much more complex than any of us could have imagined? What if there was a fourth witness hidden away for decades and through the detective work of a researcher, Fina de Armada, this witness was discovered and interviewed? What if the so-called angel hair that fell over the crowd is also reported by witnesses who have had close encounters with UFOs today? Then there is the dull silver disc, which flew over the 80,000 people gathered at Fatima, which seemed to create chaos as car windshields exploded, hoods flew open, and gasoline spontaneously combusted. What if there was a picture taken 101 years ago that lay undiscovered in the Fatima archives until one day, Jose Muchado had access to it. What he found may be a smoking gun. 
Then, there are the numerous reports of apparitions and so-called sun miracles. But what are these really? Could they be harbingers of deception? This is Fatima 2, Strange Phenomenon. And as you can see, wow, uh, what a production. And again, the production values on, on both of these DVDs are over the top. Thank you, Gary. But let me tell you, L.A., I, I almost jumped out of my chair because I've been studying uh, what the Bible has to say about goddess worship literally for decades. And you, I believe you have brought light to this subject that just hasn't been there before. And I appreciate what you've done. Thank you. It was, you know, we sat down with Dr. Michael Lake. Derek Gilbert has a cameo in it. We discussed things with him. Carl Teitrib, all people that a lot of our viewers will know. Um, and the idea, and we also talked to an anthropologist in Portugal who, who gives us this idea. What we discovered, there were serpent cults all throughout Portugal, serpent cults. And, and, and the anthropologist said in this, and the serpent would give, appear as a woman, and the serpent would give knowledge. And then I say in the film, yeah, and that, it gives the knowledge, but that knowledge always comes with a price. Um, and there's nothing mm. new about that. The shamans of today and the witch doctors from, from New Guinea all the way over to South Africa or in the bush still practice and still go to exactly the same place. So we, we sort of, we got into that, we exposed that, um, and, I, and it was a very difficult piece to shoot and to actually edit to tell the story because it was so disturbing. And again, when I was there, I was hit with such visceral spiritual warfare. I've been a Christian for going on 38 years this June, and I've never, and I've experienced a lot of warfare, um, a lot of unwanted thoughts. I've never experienced such a visceral attack as I did when we were over there in Portugal, specifically at right around Fatima. It was absolutely through the roof, unbelievable. Now I want to go back to the little character that appeared to the three okay. children and to the other woman, <clears throat> uh, and the fact that it's a strange-looking, if you, and let me use the word alien-looking character. Can't tell whether it's male or female. Right. It, its clothing is strange. Right. If any of us were to see that today, we would not be thinking anything, any religious thought at all. We would be thinking about something entirely different. But as you got into this, the femininity of this deity and its connection with ancient uh, serpent deities that go way back into history uh, is just is too uh, pronounced to ignore. It's, it's there. And I'm holding here a copy of the February uh, 2017 issue of Prophecy Watcher on the cover uh, is the title Tracking the Mysterious Goddess in History. I've been interested in this subject for a long time, L.A. And the goddess is still with us. She's standing on the Capitol Dome mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. Her mm -hmm. name is Columbia. But she goes all the way back to Athena and to Minerva and Diana of the Ephesians mm -hmm. in the Bible. The goddess is a presence and she's always there in, uh, at the seat of some pronounced demonic activity. Mm -hmm. And this little character seen by the three children, I think you've really unlocked a, a, a secret about that character. There's a term I, I sort of coined, interdimensional transgender entity, because there are no female angels. It's just not there in the biblical narrative at all. Transgendered interdimensional entities. And what, we, what I believe is these fallen angels are obsessed with the feminine form. And so they appear as these goddesses. It all goes back to the same thing. They want to be worshipped. And isn't it interesting, here we are in 2018, and what is, what is the big thing in, in, in global society, this, this sort of exalting the legitimacy of transgendered individuals? And Absolutely. I, I want to make something clear. You know, people who are, who are going through this, they need prayer and they need counseling. I understand that. But it, we still have to understand that what we're looking at, there's something, there's a power behind this, which is infusing it. One more thing, you mentioned the sacred feminine. The w women, especially in the West, have been elevated, and I'm not just talking about you know the, 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 a, a, your wife or a housewife or anything like that, but when you look at hair commercials and the commercials that are on TV and, and the billboards and the ads, um, they, they take on this semi-goddess-like form. It is, and, it, and you have to scratch your head and say, my gosh, what is going on here? 
because it's almost it's almost like worship. Yeah, I know what you mean? A, like a perfume commercial. Like a perfume uh, commercial. With a, a, a woman right. dressed up to look like a goddess, like a goddess. W- walking on water. Why is that? <clears throat> Why is What's that? she doing? She's reflecting an ancient belief system. I be- yeah, and, I, and it I didn't agree. come out of nowhere. It came out of the dark side. That's right. And and it, it's a satanic deception. And, I agree. And, and and I have to tell you, those of you watching, it's going to be difficult for LA and I in just the few minutes that are remaining to absolutely present the, this, impossible. this concept with impact. It right. is impossible because there's just too much to it. Even in the film, Gary, I left out so much... So much of the interviews with, with uh, Dr. Lake and, and Carl and, and, and Derek Gilbert, I mean, it just, you know, you have to keep it moving, but you there's do. so much I left out. But I think we, what we have is pithy and poignant, hopefully. But again, you have taken a, a rather obscure, uh, historically misinterpreted event, and you've gone and, and looked at, and I want to say something else here, looked at the photographs. Because there are photographs <clears throat> of this event yes. that are phenomenal photographs. Yes. And if you haven't seen those, wow, pictures and, and, worth... And you, I know you haven't seen those photographs. <laughs> there, was a photographer, yeah. there was a photographer there, his name was uh, Ben O'Leal. And he had one of those old cameras with glass plates. There's a man that, we, that we, I was supposed to interview when I was in Portugal. And so for some reason, it never happened. And our guide, Francisco... Uh, just was amazed, dumbfounded that he forgot the interview. And this only happened about several months ago. And so we did a Skype interview with, his name is Jose Machado. And he had access to the to sanctuary at Fatima in 2008. What he saw, he saw and handled the original glass plates taken on October 13th, 1917. He was able to examine them and he's qualified to do that. He's qualified to do that. And what he saw there in the glass plates, he's given us all the information. He's also given us Spiral of Life, my publishing company, the rights to the book. We are publishing his book. Um, it, it's basically, we, we show the photographs, his analyses. I've written the forward. Francisco Cordiera has written another forward to it. And that is sort of the, <laughs> that's sort of the pinnacle of the film, when we show the photograph, and, and he comes on the record, we've got four or five people like peppering him with questions via Skype. You know, how do you know this isn't a smudge or there is there's a object? Because I've always thought, Gary, that photographers get the shot. And the phenomena went on for like, you know, 10 to 14 minutes. And sure enough, there are pictures. And what it seems to be, and the viewer's gonna have to look at it and, and decide for themselves. It's undoctored, it's in the glass plate itself. It seems like there's a smoke trail that comes up like this, makes a right angle turn, and right, right over this place where the apparition supposedly appeared is a round object. And what's interesting about this, witness after witness came on the record in 1917, it was on the moors of Fatima, and stated that they looked up and saw a dull silver disc. So it's one thing to have several witnesses say that. It's another thing to have photographic proof from the original glass plates that have been sitting at Fatima, Portugal for almost 100 years and then have a researcher who's qualified to do this go in, examine the glass plate, and then give us the evidence. And that's what's produced in the film and also the book. Picture's worth a thousand words. Yes, it is. You see a disc. I mean, I've looked at the pictures. It's a disc. Let's face it. And not just one disc, but there seem to be some other objects there, which uh, we don't have time to talk about. But what really, really amazes me is the way that you have linked this event to ancient pagan worship. Yes. It's not a Christian event at all. It's, it's a pagan event. And may mark uh, the, the beginning of the march toward the end of the 20th century and the days where we are right now because more and more and more we're seeing these things in the air. I mean, all you have to do is read the statistics. Uh, UFOs are being seen not the by roof. the hundreds but by the thousands. And we've had disclosure. <laughs> and we've had disclosure. Uh, the people in the government have uh, showed us their, their little closely guarded films of, of, a, of a jet fighter following a UFO. It's been in all the news. And so bit by bit, the story is coming out. But what is the story? L.A., I think, has got the scoop on it. Fatima, one, the miracle of the sun. Fatima, two, 
strange phenomenon. What is this uh, phenomenon? What is this phenomenon? And how is it of value uh, in understanding Christian Bible prophecy? To me, it says a lot. It, it says more than a mouthful mm-hmm. <clears throat> about the last days mm-hmm. and what, what's going to Satan happen. Satan comes with all signs and lying ones. And I realize that can be deemed very offensive to some people who believe that Fatima was Mary. That's why Mary's off right. the table. Look at the evidence, decide for yourself. Look at the evidence because it's there. And I believe it's a harbinger of deception. Oh yeah, and Fatima too is just going to blow your mind because the production values, what you see, and, and, and the, when you hear people actually talking about this thing, not people who are speculating, but people who have the documents, the materials, right. the photographs. The photographs. It's all right there. Either DVD for your gift of $25 to Prophecy Watchers, free shipping uh, anywhere in the United States. If you, if you buy both of these together, we love to put things uh, together in combinations for you. Uh, we think it's kind of doing you a little service because uh, both of these f- for your gift of $50 and we're going to give you Jeff Kinley's great book on the Latter-day Church called Wake the Bride. And that package, uh, again, is uh, shipped to you free anywhere in the United States. And the 800 number is on your screen right now. You can call. Uh, you can get Fatima 1 or Fatima 2 or both with Jeff Kinley's book. And of course, you know what I would recommend. You've got to see both of these DVDs. And Jeff Kinley's book, ah, what a bonus. L.A., you know, you keep doing it. You keep going out there and probing in places that nobody else can touch. <laughs> and I, I can't imagine what the Lord's going to open up next. Very interesting to see what the next thing on the docket is, as uh, it were. And I'm sure it'll be exciting yeah. because we live in exciting days. Uh, L.A. Marzulli, always on the trail of something. And uh, keep it up. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. It's always a pleasure for me, has been for years, to talk to L.A. Marzulli about <clears throat> what may be the next adventure. This one is worth following because y- you get an idea of the times in which we live. These are very significant days. Yes, absolutely. So keep watching. We are. Our second annual Blessed Hope Prophecy Forum is not far away, and here to talk about it, Bob Ulrich. The Prophecy Watchers are coming back to Norman, Oklahoma, October 12th through 14th, 2018. We're going to be back with 30 of the leading names in Bible prophecy. I'm sure you recognize many of the names. Gary Stearman, Tommy Ice, L.A. Marzulli, David Reagan, Jan Markell, Bill Koenig, Don Perkins, Andy Woods, Gary Frazier, Bill Salas. It's a, literally one of the biggest one-of-a-kind prophecy conferences in the world today. It is, Bob. In a year, the year 2018, which just happens to be prophetically important. 30 speakers delivering over 60 messages. You can register for this great event at prophecywatchers.com or you can call our ministry toll-free at 888 722 0008.